Okay, hi everybody. Author Barbara Hinsky here. Still working on this joint Instagram and Facebook Live thing. I wanted to talk to you today as we're ramping up towards the uh, launch of Guiding Emily this Friday. Guiding Emily, a tale of love, loss, and courage. I wanted to talk to you today about my own white cane training that I was lucky enough to do through the Foundation for Blind Children in research for this book. To set the stage, white cane training is a big moment for um, a blind person, for someone to get to the point where they will admit, I need training is a big deal because you're admitting to yourself and to the larger community that I am blind. So it's quite the moment. People tend to cope as long as they can, or sometimes do, by either working with a sighted guide, somebody whose arm they can take, or, um, staying at home and you can memorize the number of steps to the bathroom, the refrigerator or whatever, and hope that the person you're living with doesn't put something in your path or move a piece of furniture. Um, and certainly additional technology assistance, um, you can have just about anything delivered right now. That can help people cope at home, but it also leads to a shrinking of your world and more and more isolation. I think all of us have found recently with the stay at home orders that this forced isolation isn't a very welcome thing at all. I'm a homebody and I have a lovely home, so it's been, I like to cook and like to do all that homey stuff. So I've been pretty happy, but not entirely. I, I get antsy. So it's given me a little bit of an insight when I went in for what my white cane training, I'm you know waiting in the waiting room and then they call me back. And so to the um, instructor's name, the mobility instructor, orientation and mobility, his name was Spencer Churchill, wonderful man. So on the way to Spencer's office, I'm you know counting the number of doorways on the right and left side of the hallway, just kind of doing a little advanced work. Uh, he fitted me for my cane with the tip on the floor and it's standing perpendicular to the floor, it's to come to about uh, your breastbone height. There are different kinds of tips depending upon whether you want it to the marshmallow tip and round and pointed, exactly how you want to use it. Um, then he put on me a pair of goggles that replicate vision loss and it wasn't total darkness for my training. I had a little pinhole of vision basically in the center of, I believe it was my left eye. So that was a pretty good place to have a pinhole field of vision. And for a while I thought, okay, well this isn't too bad. I can just swing my head wildly around and kind of know where I am. Well, that, that simply doesn't function. You can't go very far, very fast, and you make yourself dizzy and uh, a little bit disoriented. We start with the cane. The sweeping motion is, you've seen it, it's right to left and you put your, the tip of your cane where your foot is going to go so that you know when you put your foot there, it's safe. There is something there and nothing in its way and it doesn't drop off. We learned how to find doorways and uh, drop-offs, curbs, stairs, and all of that. He then showed me how you um, low power mode, what does that mean? Oh well, I'm gonna to have to ignore that. He then showed me how you find a landmark at the foundation. It was a great big giant Xerox copy machine, so something that won't tend to be moved. And then you count doorways back to his office, doorways to the ladies room. And we accomplished that. And I thought, okay, okay, I'm getting this. Then we went outside and whole sea change in my feeling. We weren't near a busy street. We were on just a little very quiet street with a huge parking lot between me and the sidewalk where I was. I was in goggles, but I knew I have sight, so I could have pulled them off. And I was with Spencer. Nothing was going to happen to me. I, my pulse was racing. It was a cool day and my back of my neck was getting sweaty. I don't know if I was having a panic attack. I was kind of close. We walked up and down. We found the curb. We found the truncated 
markings, the, you know, the bumps in the sidewalk. You've all seen them at airports and, and lots of public places that indicate to a visually impaired person whether they've got a cane or they can feel it through their shoes that they're going to be entering a, a street or a roadway. That's what that indicates. We found those. And I navigated up and back successfully. Uh, it was terrifying. I felt a heightened awareness of my body. I felt like air was pressing on my shoulders. Um, it was very interesting. I mean, I'm doing this all in an afternoon. There was no chance to practice this, but it gave me a feel for this. Uh, he explained that they work up to, you know, they start out outside just on the little side streets and then they work up to around the block and then they work up to, okay, here's your cane go around the block and come back in when you're done. Um, he told me that he does watch out the window for people to follow their progress, but they have the feeling of being alone. And then finally, to graduate with your cane, they will take you to a location they don't believe you've been to before, and they will tell you where they're gonna pick you up and you have to find your way. Or maybe they'll tell you, I'm gonna meet you in front of the, the grocery store. Here's my list, here's some money. I'll meet you with the groceries in front of the grocery. I can't even imagine what a scary experience that is, but how empowering it is because people do this. They exist to train people to do this and they do. Uh, the foundation told me about a 17 year old boy who lost his eyesight very suddenly. You know, he had just gotten his driver's license, he was just dating, he was an honor student, um, and he lost his eyesight. Things changed. He enrolled in the program and did very well, graduated with a degree in environmental engineering, and goes to Europe by himself in the summer with his cane. Okay, I'd be nervous with my young adult child traveling around Europe by himself, let alone if he was blind. So it's quite the thing. Uh, I also learned that in order to qualify to get a guide dog, you have to be very proficient at your white cane mobility. Uh, guide dogs are trained to get out and about and they like to get out and about, they like to work. So they don't want to have an owner that's gonna have some sedentary in the house lifestyle. They want to get up and get going and so part of that is having that orientation and mobility training. I had just a little snippet of it and I'm telling you I, I will never forget it and uh, I'm so grateful for the foundation to let me have that opportunity. So uh, I've been to a puppy graduation. I'm going to talk about that. That was fun and very tear-jerking and some of the other inspirational things I've learned at Foundation for Blind Children. Hope everybody's having a good day. I'm so anxious for Friday and the launch of Guiding Emily for you to see my baby out there in the world. Take care, everybody. Bye.